Hello and welcome to Bradio Software Development. My name is Brad and today we're going to be looking at IPFS. Uh, so we're going to be setting up our own server, we're going to be pushing some files to it and then trying to open it up in a Brave browser using the new IPFS support. So without further ado, let's get straight into it. Okay, so before we get into the actual setting up of the IPFS system on our Mac Mini, I just wanted to explain exactly what it, uh, what it was and how it works slightly. So it stands for Interplanetary File System, and it is a, a new peer-to-peer -peer network protocol based on the blockchain. So if we come over to the website, they've got a really good piece on how it works. So it's essentially a way of uh, being able to upload a file to a peer-to-peer -peer network. So you might have 10 peers, and they all have a copy of that file, um, but it removes duplications across the network because what it does is it, um, if somebody else uploads that same file, it will sh it will uh, remove all the uh, files across all of the network, and it will make sure that there's only a single uh, key stored within uh, the the network as a whole. So it's pretty cool how that works, but I won't go too much into that in a minute. Um, I just wanted to show you this picture. So. Uh, on the left hand side we see the server based approach which uh, you know servers use today so you might have like an FTP server with one server it might be in a cloud center somewhere or it might be uh, in like an office or somewhere you might have loads of servers and then every uh, uh, computer can connect to that server but what happens is if this server disappears then the website no longer exists now there are ways of um, of uh, adapting to that so what they might have is they might have replica sets so they might have like five servers that all store exactly the same files so if one server goes down there's still four more available the only problem with this is that if um if somebody decides to take down the website like say there's a, a distributed denial of service attack like a ddos attack um you can actually ddos all of those five replica sets and it will take down the server completely now the other hand is the ptp network as you can see on the right hand side so instead of every server having all the files every everybody who decides to start a node essentially has a share of the server that somebody else has made and the benefit of doing this is that say um say somebody decides to ddos um the web server or something like that then you can't actually do it because there's so many devices on the network that it will just be impossible to take down all of them at the same time this is also really really good when it comes to censorship because it means that if google or aws or microsoft or amazon uh, aws is amazon sorry uh, <laughs> decide to take it down then there is absolutely no way they can do that because they'd have to take down every single computer on the network or take down the protocol itself somehow but because everybody is talking to each other over their isp it would actually fall back on the ISPs to ban the protocol somehow, uh, which I actually think would be almost impossible because because otherwise like torrents would be banned because you wouldn't be able to download files from torrent software um, and they haven't managed to ban that yet. So this works in essentially the same way and it's uh, all based on the blockchain. So one file will have a hash and everybody will know about that hash and then it all gets compressed into one hash if there's like multiple files being uploaded. Say somebody uploads image one, over on one side of the world somebody uploads image one on the other side of the world it would work out that the hash for that file is exactly the same and it would essentially consolidate all of it down into one hash um, which is exactly what this is doing so um, that's all the technical stuff out of the way uh, let's actually look into um, how we actually use it so on the right hand side i've got my terminal it's a brand new server i haven't installed any of this before so um, there's actually three ways to install it you can either install a desktop app you can install a companion app, which is like an extension that essentially creates a node server on your on your browser extension. Or the way we're going to do it is over the command line. I'm going to look for Mac OS X. Now, I am going to say that this is um, an AMD, AMD 64 image. So I don't know if it's going to work on this M1, but we can use Rosetta 2 in order to um, get around this. So um, now on my Mac Mini, I don't actually have wget, but you can install it by brew. So if we do brew install wget, if you don't have brew, um, I'll put another link in the description to where you can do download it, or I can send you a link to the other video that I've made where it shows you how to install it. So we're just going to wait for this to finish. Okay, so now that we've installed wget, we should be able to now copy this command on step number one. 
and paste it into our browser. There we go. So that's now downloading the IPFS um, zip file. And now what we need to do is unpack it. So if you go to step number two and copy and paste this other line here. There we go. So now if we do a list directory and we can see that we have the zip file and then the unpacked version. So if you CD into the unpacked version, which is go-ipfs, Oh, sorry, go dash IPFS, list that this directory. As you can see here, we've got all these files. Um, now the third step is it's telling us to run the install script. Now it does say that you can run bash install to sh, but you can also do dot forward slash install sh as well. There we go. So now it's moved all of our binaries to the user local bin directory, which means if we now type in IPFS dash dash version, we should see the version. And that will only work if your um, paths are set up correctly. If your paths are not set up correctly, um, what you can do is do echo path, and then it will uh, give you this. Um, and just make sure that you have slash user local bin there. If you don't, if you don't have it, what you can do is you can do export uh, path is equal to dollar sign path and then you can put in a, a colon and then you can paste in um, forward slash user local bin like that and what it will do is it will just add that part onto the end of your paths I'm not going to do it because it will duplicate the paths uh, and I don't want that so that's just how you can work around that so um, step number four we've already done just to check the version and we can see that we now have the version running. So now the next thing we need to do is to actually try and start up our daemon just so that we can like check that everything's working and we can like basically set up a node. Now as soon as you start up the daemon it will start um, it will start like a local server and it will find loads of peers on your network um, and you can start hosting files immediately from that. So if we come down to the how to section and then click command line quick start if you see here, we need to now initialize the repository. So we're already in the folder that we want to uh, set it up with. Um, but I'm actually just going to go back one step and read and make another directory. So cd dot dot forward slash. The reason I'm doing this, I don't want to mix up all my folders and files everywhere. And I'm going to make a di uh, directory using mkdir ipfs dash repo. And then I'm going to cd into that repo. Make sure there's nothing in there. Cool. And the first one we want to type in is IPFS in it. And what this will do, this will set up the local web server and it will give us a, uh, a hash and all of that. So if we actually um, enter in this, uh, what it tells you to here using I I IPFS, it will give us uh, a really fancy little quick start menu and it will actually give us all the fi files that are on the local web server for the node. So if we scroll down on the documentation you can see that we've just done the quick start file uh, and now what we want to do is we want to start up our node so we do ipfs d-a-e-m-o-n and it will give you a url that you can click now if you hold command on your keyboard if you're using a mac mini you can actually click this link here And as you can see, this is the web GUI for the node that we're, we've now started. So this isn't actually running a, um, you aren't actually hosting files using this. All you're doing is creating a node that other peers can host files uh, on your server on behalf of using the blockchain. So if you see here, uh, you can see that we've discovered 284 peers. So these are 284 people uh, on our current um, IPFS network who are close to us. And if we go back to status, we can see all of our network traffic here. So we can see exactly what's coming up and what's coming down to our block. And if we click on the files here, where it says 2.4 megabytes of files, we can see that we are currently hosting 254 blocks and it's about four mega, um, it's about three megabytes on the repo. So if you click on pins, you can actually see these folders. Now these are other folders and files that are being hosted on the daemon. Now, because we've um, initialized our quick start uh, file set, these are actually the files that we're hosting, which is just the quick start files. Right click on one of them, such as quick start. 
and you click on inspect. We can see all the information about that file. So we can see the size, uh, we can see all the buffer. So this is all the encoded data for that one file. And then if you're using a Brave browser, you can actually click up here, view on IPFS gateway. Okay, and then uh, here we can see our file that was being uploaded. And this is coming straight from our uh, daemon with our quick start files and folders. So um, that's how you basically set up the daemons. But what we want to do is we want to upload our own files. So what we're going to do is we're going to come over here and we're going to click new tab uh, using command T to open up a new terminal window. And we're going to CD back into our projects folder. I'm going to CD into our IPFS folder, just where we've got all of our stuff. And we're going to make a new directory called IPFS-test and CD into that directory. Um, now, I'm going to put a link in the description, but I've already set up a very, very basic uh, website um, using a Nyancat. So if you go to there, um, on the link and you can actually clone or copy and paste those uh, files to this folder if you want um, so we're just going to go ahead and do that now okay and if we click on the first file we should be able to see what's inside it so all we've got is just a link to a style sheet and uh, an anchor image and this is the image here we're just literally just going to show we're literally just going to show this on the screen so if we get this green icon here, click that, click SSH first, and then click the clipboard. Obviously, um, if you haven't got SSH enabled on your GitHub or anything like that, you can just save these files one by one into this folder. That's completely up to you. Uh, and what we're gonna do is to git clone, and then we're gonna clone that repo down. Now this will make a subdirectory because I've cloned it. So I wanna make sure that I'm in the folder that I want to push up to IPFS. There we go. Uh, and the next thing to do is to literally upload our new folder to the IPFS network. And you can do that by literally typing in IPFS space add dash r full stop to push the current directory up to the IPFS network. So now if we come over to our, uh, if I can find it, our IPFS node GY and we come to files and you click pins. Uh, one of these should actually be our website. Okay, so as you can see here, we have the three uh, files on the screen. Um, now, what a lot of people do when they run simple um, static HTML websites is they double click on the index.html file and then it loads up that as the root file. But in IPFS, it doesn't work like that. If we click on this file, um, if we click on the three dots and we go to inspect, and then we click on view on IPFS gateway, you can see that it hasn't actually loaded any of these other images. And that's because the URL is pointing to the exact file on the hash, but we need to point to the root directory that that file is in. So if we close this and go back to our main directory, up here you can click more and click inspect and then view that on the IPFS network and it will, it will load this index.html file as the root file and it shall show your Nyan image. So there we go, we have a file on the IPFS network. Very, very simple. Uh, I'm still gonna need to experiment a little bit with this because I'm not sure how server rendered files are gonna work. You might not be even be able to host uh, like PHP files and things like that. I don't know yet, I haven't looked into it. I'm not even gonna guess whether you can. But one cool application of this is what you can do is you can bring down a GitHub repo you can build it and then you can push the build directory to the IPFS network and then you can keep on building that. And there is actually a way in IPFS where you can overwrite previous hashes with the new versions of a Git repo. So you don't end up having like, you know, version one, version two, version three, version four, version five on the IPFS network. So that's really, really cool. And I think we'll discuss that in another video because this one has overran massively. So um, thanks for watching. I hope it wasn't too complicated. Hope I didn't speak too fast as I normally do. But you know, with YouTube, there is a little icon where you can slow it down, um, and uh, you know, just do it in your own time. It's a really, really cool technology. I'm going to be playing around with this a lot. I love it because it's blockchain, and it's also very easy to use. And it's only in beta, or it might even be in alpha. I'm not sure. Um, but yeah, that's basically my video. So um, thanks for watching. Remember to like, comment, subscribe, ask any questions if you get stuck. And uh, I look forward to seeing you in the next video. See you later.